All right, good evening, guys. Here is the Unit 4, Lesson 5 lesson. I took a vote mainly in the last class, because I forgot to ask the other two classes, which were they rather? And the majority of them voted for me to do the lesson as a video. So here is, here it is. So the title of this lesson is How Do Environmental Changes Affect Living Things? So we're going to say how they can change things around them. So last week we were talking about food chains and all that other stuff. And this week we're going to talk about how the environment affects the animals' lives. You have three vocabulary words down here. They're also on the board. Drought, flood, and erosion. Make sure you write those down. Pause the video if you need to. Moving on. Okay. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. Ooh, I don't want to save it. My bad. All right, so I made these pages a little bit bigger so you can follow along, or you can look in your book, but I'm just going to show you what I'm reading. <clears throat> so it says, Fragile Ecosystems. In an ecosystem, plants, animals, and other living things share the same environment. But what happens when the environment changes? As you read these two pages, draw a circle around the clue word that signals a cause. So right here, strong winds have destroyed this forest ecosystem. So right here, you want to circle strong winds because that is what destroyed this ecosystem. So it wasn't people, but it is very strong winds. In an ecosystem, both living and non-living things interact. If non-living things cause the ecosystem to change, the living thing will be affected. A powerful storm, for example, may kill plants and animals. Some animals may have to leave, may have to leave to survive. Other animals may stay and have to compete for resources. So resources are things like food and water and things like that. Fires cause flames, heat, smoke, and ash. As a result, they can change ecosystems. Fires can be caused by a natural event like lightning. Fires also can be caused by people. Their effects can be both positive and negative. So we always say fire is bad, but sometimes you need fire to make the soil richer and things, but it needs to be controlled. Next page. Move this out the way. Here's a negative. Fires destroy trees and other plants as well as animal habitat. So this was a forest. Animals lived here, but now their homes are gone because the fire destroyed it. Another negative is this coyote left the fire burden area to look for a new habitat. So he had to leave his home and find somewhere else to live. But here's a positive. Fires clear space for new plant growth. Ashes burned from plants add nutrients to the soil. Another positive, pine cones open to let their seeds out. Some pine cones will only open when fire heats them. So you see these little pointy things you talked about when we discussed the plant life cycle. Those little pointy things are the seeds, and sometimes they only open when plants, when there's a heat next to them, really high heat. So it says, write one headline that describes a positive effect of the fire, and one headline that describes a negative effect. So I know this is a little bit difficult here, so we're thinking like a newspaper headline. So I'm going to do a positive one first, and I'm going to label it positive. A good headline would be, Fire Clears Path for New Plants, or New Plant Growth. I'll leave exclamation because that's an exciting thing. It's positive. It's a good thing. Now next will be negative. Fire burns forest, leaving animals homeless. And that's really sad. So that's a negative. So fire burns forest, leaving animals homeless. So these are titles or headlines like newspapers and things you would see. So while some of these are sad, I agree, but it happens all the time, especially in California where they're really dry land. They just had a big fire, and the Amazon rainforest also just had a big fire because it's very dry. So type that. Pause if you need to. I'm going to the next screen. The right amount of water. <clears throat> Plants and animals need water to live, but too much or too little water can have a negative effect on the environment. Skip an active reading. Why don't you scroll down? Sorry. Okay. Scroll down. All right. Earth's surface is always wearing down and breaking apart. Erosion is when small pieces of rock are carried by the water. 
So that just means whenever it keeps raining and raining and raining, that means there's going to be erosion. See that? It's not even let me click. Oh, I know why. There we go. Ah, sorry for all this. <coughs> I'm going to start that top. Earth's surface is always wearing down and breaking apart. Erosion is when small pieces of rock are carried away, carried away by water and sometimes wind. When you look at the flowing river, you see more than just moving water. There are also pebbles, sand, and other earth materials. This is erosion. Ocean waves can also cause erosion. Waves hitting the beach carry sand out to the sea, and as land wears away, habitats for plants, animals, and people disappear. So as you can see here, what erosion looks like. Water loosens and moves the sand and rock away from the beach. Areas where grass once grew have been washed away by the water. So it didn't always look like this. You can see some lines right here to where the uh, mountains used to be, or a little ridge. And that's where that also had grass and stuff on top of it. But the when the waves get high, it's get washed against the shore. And it's going to keep wearing away to the, to the ocean. It's going to take more and more of that brick and uh, rock and sand away. Erosion is not the only way water affects the environment. <clears throat> Both floods and droughts affect the environment. A flood is a large amount of water that covers normally dry land. Floods can happen very suddenly. A drought occurs when it does not rain for a long time. Long droughts force people and animals to look for new places to live. Plants wilt and die. So let's finish the story. Read the start of each story and look at the photograph, then finish the story. Heavy rains this week caused the river to rise higher and higher. Nearby fields were flooded. So we're going to use the picture to finish the story. But as you can see, oh, no space. You can see. Even cows had to find high ground because their field was flooded. All right. So there's that. So that finishes that story. Next one, we have not had rain in many months. We are now in a drought. So here you can see there once was a river, but since it has not rained in a long time, it is all dried up. So you can tell that here in this picture because right here, it kind of looks like a road to you. This is actually where a river was. So there was water here. You can make it look a little pretty. Let's see, I can put some blue in there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I know it's not beautiful. It's fine. So you can, that is where a river was. So it's been so dry and they haven't had rain that it washed it away. <clears throat> so make sure you have these copied. And that's going to be part one of the video. See you in the next one.